Hey guys, I'm Zora from In The Midnight Kitchen and this is my YouTube channel. So I am a chef and food blogger in Cape Town and I studied at Cordon Bleu in London. And in this channel I want to show you different baking techniques, different vlogs of my daily life in terms of baking and step-by-step -step ways of how to do different ingredients, different recipes, um, savory and sweet. So today we are going to do macarons. I know I should have maybe started with something a little bit easier, but might as well just jump in. So we have our basic ingredients. Um, we've got icing sugar and ground almonds, and then four egg whites and some caster sugar. So don't worry about the ingredients and the quantities. That's going to be posted right underneath um, the blog. So don't worry about that. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to blend these two together so you get a really nice fine consistency. If it is a bit rough and coarse, you're going to see it in your macarons, so you do not want that. So I use my food processor and then sometimes if it doesn't come out smooth enough, I'll pass through a sieve as well. So just put that in. and then we just blend it until everything is smooth. Okay, so I basically would just blend it for a few minutes. The color will become a little bit more beige, a little bit lighter, and then you'll know it's done. So I'll essentially just push this out now into a bowl and that's what my folding is going to start with the egg whites and the sugar. So now that that is done, I can just put that aside. And now we're going to be whisking our egg whites, 130 grams of egg whites. And at the same time, I'm going to be pouring in a steady stream of caster sugar. So the caster sugar basically volumizes the whole egg white and that's how you get a really nice meringue. And at the same time, I'm going to be adding in some turquoise food coloring and caramel flavor. I thought and it is a little bit basic, so I thought I would go with caramel this time. So I'm going to pour my egg whites in. Uh, it's about four egg whites if you don't really want to measure 150 grams, that's also fine. And we're going to let this whisk until it gets to a bit of a foamy consistency and then we're only going to add the cast of sugar. So maybe about a minute to two minutes in and then we'll add the sugar. So I thought I should show you so you know what you're looking for. Basically, it's going to look foamy like that. So it's not stiff, it's not whisked yet, it's not stiff peak, you've basically achieved nothing. But only at this point do you add your sugar. Before that, it could kind of make the whole thing flop, so definitely don't do that. So after this, now we can add the sugar in, in a steady stream. So don't usually stop it in between, that's not a good thing to do, but I just wanted to show you. So now we're at about soft peak, you can see it's kind of just falling, it's not stiff at all. At this point, you add your food coloring in and your flavorant. A note for the food coloring, when you're putting it in, put a little bit more than usual. So you're opting for a darker color because the minute it goes into the oven, it's going to lighten completely and it can come out looking a little washed out. So add a little bit more than you usually would and you'd probably that way achieve your desired color. Okay, so we're trying to achieve a stiff peak. So, if, okay, this is definitely very stiff. So that's 
pretty much a stiff peak. If it was a soft peak, it would be slouching down quite a lot. And from my consistency, it's not really moving, which means it's very stiff. So it doesn't really matter which way you add them in. You can add the meringue to the almonds or vice versa. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that you do it in three inclusions. You don't have to rush it at all. And this part is called macronage. And this is probably the most important part to making a macaron because if you don't get this right, it's kind of a flop entirely. So that's my first inclusion. So that's kind of what it looks like. And now we're obviously going to be beating the air out. We're going to be aerating it to get more air in. Therefore, the meringue is going to basically flatten completely. And we just do this for as long as it takes. Okay, so now I've obviously added all my inclusions in. And now we're at almost at the consistency that we need it to be. So macronaging is the act of almost scraping... Ooh, scraping down the size of the bowl with the mixture and the minute it starts to slouch then you've reached the you know the best point so this is kind of how i do it i slouch it up against the walls of the bowl and then what should happen is the mixture should sort of fall down quite nicely which is happening obviously we don't want it to run down because then it's not really going to hold any form so i'm done it took Maybe about five, six minutes. And now I'm ready to cut it. I'm going to be using a 10 millimeter round nozzle in my piping bag. So that's obviously the best way to pipe macarons. If you want them smaller, you're going to get mini ones, bigger, really big macarons. So, first thing I do, I put it in my piping bag and I leave it closed. I don't open it just yet. Put it over my hand almost like a cup so it gives it a bit of stability while I'm obviously pouring the mixture inside and then just in a few scoops because I'm not going to be doing too much at a time just so that it gives me more control I'll just put a few in okay so once that's done I'm using my silpat mat and it's a little bit too big for the tray but that's fine it just means I'll have to do maybe about three rounds for it to fit um, the tray and the oven for me to finish the whole mixture so now that this is ready I just take my paring knife you can use this as well and go around the whole thing there we go so that's the consistency that you want and when you pipe it, you sort of press down a little bit and then you let go of the pressure from the bag and whisk into this like a sort of like a little circle. And you don't need them to be too big or too small. So almost like a 50 cent, 50 cent coin is what you're looking at. And try and get them as similar. make a few at a time so when that's done we're just going to tap it a couple times and that's to get all the air bubbles out so that when it bakes there's no cracks um, there's no dents there's no holes so just do it a few times and it also creates a nice little flat look as opposed to a very bumpy round macaron um, macarons have set really nicely. I waited about 40 minutes. Um, the room that we're in at the moment is a little bit cold, so it was going to take a little bit longer, but now it's fine. So it just has to be dry to the touch. And I preheated my oven to 160, 165 degrees, just in between there. And I'm going to put it in the oven now, and we're just going to bake it for about 10 minutes. And we're obviously aiming to get feet. So feet are the little... It's almost like a little rise underneath the head of the macaron that you're looking for. Um, any longer than 9 to 10 minutes, you're going to start seeing cracks, color dis um, discoloration, which is not what you want. So just make sure you don't leave the kitchen and just keep watching it the whole time. So we're going to put that in. 
just quickly and we're gonna just while my macarons were drying out and sitting really nicely at the top I made some buttercream so in the buttercream we have about 100 grams of butter a cup to a cup and a half of icing sugar depending on your sweetness and I didn't add any food coloring I just added a teaspoon of vanilla essence so when the macarons come up, we're just going to pipe it with the same 10 millimeter nozzle we used to make the macarons. It's been 10 minutes so far, maybe just a little bit less. So I'm going to take them out now and they've developed really nice feet. So this is probably the best time to take them out. So as you can see, the color has obviously gone from a really deep turquoise to a much lighter washed out color, which is actually what I wanted. I didn't want something that dark. So this just shows that you have to make your color a lot darker in order to get the color that you want at the end. So at, underneath each macaron, you can see these little feet have developed. So under every macaron you need that to happen and the bottom needs to be really dry as well in order to pipe the buttercream perfectly. So I'm going to let this sit or dry and not be so sticky at the bottom for about five minutes and I'm just going to pick this up and move it to a cool surface so it gets done a little bit quicker and then we'll pipe the buttercream. They have actually dried so quickly. I didn't expect that to happen as fast as they did. So I just sort of lined them up to have their partners matching one another. The, I only actually have two that aren't more or less the same size as the rest. I am now going to just flip them over. Um, so it makes it a little bit easier just to pipe the actual pair together. I'm not going to use too much, I'm just going to use a little blob because the minute you press the partner on top of it, it kind of just spreads out really nicely. See, and then you can see the white coming through really well. So the partner at the top kind of helps the bottom one a little bit. So I'm just going to do that for all of them. That is how you get a pretty perfect macaron, guys. This is probably one of the best that I've ever made and as you could tell these petit fours are very delicate to make. They are very simple ingredients but if you don't get the macronage right, if you don't let it set for long enough, it is going to flop, you're not going to get the feet. Discoloration and cracking can go wrong and I'm pretty sure a lot of people have tried it before and they can flop. So if you just follow these simple steps, they should come out pretty perfect. I really hope you enjoyed watching today. I really hope that you guys tag me in every attempt that you have at these and that they come out really great. Please subscribe to my channel to keep updated and to keep seeing my latest recipes and food hacks. Thanks for watching guys!